Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to Vlogmas. Today I am sharing a fun winter themed meal prep with you. I'm going to be sharing my delicious recipe for pumpkin bars. We're also going to be making my aunt's recipe for broccoli salad, which is fabulous. I'm making a lunch meal prep of Malaysian spiced pork patties, a new recipe for homemade spinach dip, as well as a dinner meal prep of turkey and dumplings. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna make some broccoli salad. This recipe is from my aunt, so I can type it out down below, but we will need some crumbled bacon for this. I'm actually going to cook some up in the oven and crumble it myself, but you could use bacon bits if you wanted to. So I just have some bacon here on a cooling rack on a pan lined with foil. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this in the oven probably for 20 to 30 minutes. We also need some almond slivers for this recipe, and I'm going to toast them in a pan. Uh, it also calls for sunflower seeds, but I don't think I'm gonna use those because I feel like almonds is gonna give it enough crunch. So I'm just gonna put these over low heat and let them toast until they're golden brown. I'm also going to thinly slice some red onion. I'm going to use just half of this red onion because this is a large one, but if you like more onion flavor, you can do that as well. got some broccoli here in this bowl. This is just about two heads of broccoli that I've chopped into bite-sized pieces and washed it. And then I have some red grapes as well. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a wash. So I sliced up some grapes in here and the ratios are up to you. Just add as much as you feel like you would like. I'm gonna put my onion in there. And then also I have my uh, toasted almonds in here. This is how I like to toast them, just really low and slow. And you can see that they're nice and toasty, but not burnt. Definitely keep a close eye on them. So I'm gonna sprinkle these in here. And this would be great too, to take to like a holiday dinner if you're asked to bring a side dish or a salad. When uh, my aunt brought this to my house. Obviously, I've made broccoli salad a lot in different, you know, other renditions, but this one was really good. So I highly recommend you try this recipe if you haven't made it like this. For the dressing in this bowl, I have Miracle Whip and sugar, and I'm going to add some white vinegar. We're gonna add one tablespoon of white vinegar, and we'll give this a whisk. I was telling you guys like a couple weeks ago that I normally don't buy Miracle Whip, except when I make my grandma's potato salad recipe. But now I'll obviously be buying it when I wanna make this, <laughs> this broccoli salad. Um, but normally I just buy mayo, cause that's what we eat on sandwiches and like egg salad, tuna salad, chicken salad. But anyway, so now that I have this container of Miracle Whip, I'll probably have to make some potato salad here <laughs> soon to use it up. So my bacon is still cooking, uh, but you don't, really probably want to add the crumbled bacon right off the bat anyway because if you stir it up it's going to get soggy on the inside of the salad but you can make this a day ahead of time which is why it's great for a gathering so i'm going to add my dressing and then um, i'm just going to give this a stir and pop it in the fridge and then once the bacon's done we'll cut that up or crumble it up and add it to the top of the broccoli salad. So just a tip, uh, put a timer on while you're making your bacon. Don't be like me and partially uh, burn it. I mean, honestly, this, for people that like a really, really crispy bacon, this is probably, <laughs> this is probably okay. I like crispy bacon. I just don't like it quite this crispy, um, but I think I can still salvage a lot of it, maybe. Some of the ends that are just a little bit, you know, burnt i can just kind of take those off but that's unfortunate that's what happens when i do too many things in the kitchen and i think i can do i always think i can do things without a timer you know and what i should be doing is just estimating the amount of time i think is left and then erring on the side of caution setting the timer at least then i have a reminder but you know whatever live and learn or live and don't learn, like me. <laughs> I think we have still more than enough uh, crumbled bacon for our salad. And bonus, it's extra crispy. Do you guys like crispy bacon? 
or not. I personally think crispy bacon is the best. I do not like soggy, smushy bacon, but. Okay, here we go. Homemade bacon bits. My broccoli salad has been sitting in the fridge for, I don't know, I'd say about an hour maybe. And if I didn't mention it before, you do wanna make this ahead of time because you want the broccoli to have a little bit of chance to soften in the fridge. I'm just gonna pour on our bacon crumbles and those will just sit on the top. We're not gonna mix them all in just because I wanna make sure that they don't get soggy. But this is our delightful broccoli salad. Like I said, thank you Aunt Sue for the recipe. Highly recommend this. All right, so we are gonna make these Malaysian spiced pork patties for meal prep. Uh, this is from Green Chef, so thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring it today's video. I'm gonna tell you guys a little more about them in a second and the discount that they are offering, uh, which is fantastic right now. But here is the recipe card for this dish. And then I just put everything out into bowls. I sent some cashew pieces. This is a Malaysian style curry spice, some toasted coconut flakes, uh, some ground pork, shredded carrots and cabbage, some bell pepper and some broccoli, onion and ginger. And then this is a spicy ginger lime aioli that I may have taken a taste of and it tastes delicious. So we're gonna meal prep this for lunches this week. I've been working with Green Chef for a long time here on my channel. They're actually the longest supporter of my channel, so I appreciate them so much. But if you're not familiar with Green Chef, they are a USDA certified organic company, and they also have dishes for a variety of lifestyles. They have keto meal plans, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit and Mediterranean. And they also just offer a simply balanced meal plan if you're not looking for any of those specific diets. What I particularly like about them is that they have over 35 meal choices each week and they also give the flexibility to switch options. They offer delivery to your doorstep. All of the recipes are super easy to follow. Most of them are quick to make and everything is handpicked and delivered right to your door. All of the ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly portioned and mostly prepped. So if you guys want to try out Green Chef, I think it's something great to do during the holiday season when it's super busy. I'll have a link in the description box below, but you can go to greenchef.us and use code jenchapin10 to get 10 free meals. Plus you'll get free shipping on your first box. Again, the link is greenchef.us and use code jenchapin10 to get 10 free meals plus free shipping on your first box, which is a fantastic deal. I know you guys will not be disappointed. Okay, so I've got my ground pork in the bowl here. I'm gonna add my seasoning packets. Green Chef has the best seasoning packets. They're delicious. Then I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of salt and mix this together. While my pan is heating up, I'm just gonna give these peppers a rough chop. I went ahead and washed them up. They do come mostly cut up. Uh, most of the vegetables do, so normally there's very little prep work involved. Okay, so over here I've got my pan with some, just a little bit of light olive oil heating up. So I'm gonna form my pork into patties and get those in the pan. The seasoning smells really good. If you like curry, that's what it smells like. After we sear these patties in the pan, we're gonna finish them in the oven and then we're gonna use the same pan to cook the veggies. So, less dishes, always good. Okay, so the pork patties are done. I'm actually gonna stick those in the oven to finish cooking. In the pan, we're going to cook the rest of the veggies. Okay, so I've got all my veggies in here. I'm gonna add the toasted coconut flakes and then I'm also gonna season with salt and pepper. And this is gonna cook for about five minutes until everything is tender. Okay, so my veggies are done. I'm gonna use that to kind of make a bed on the bottom of my meal prep containers. And then I'm gonna put the pork patties on the top. This smells so good because of that ginger and onion in there. So one thing to keep in mind too when you're meal prepping is that 
if you're making things specifically for meal prep, make sure that you don't cook them entirely if it's something that you're going to reheat later. Like for example, when I reheat these uh, veggies and the pork at a later date, it's still gonna cook like more when I heat it up in the microwave. Okay, so my pork patties finished cooking in the oven and here are my completed meal prep containers. I just made up two so I could share it with you how they looked, but I'm gonna put uh, the other two together here in a second. I use these little dressing cups to hold sauces. Obviously, you don't want to heat this up when you reheat these meals. So you can just kind of take the dressing out, heat it up, and then pour it on. But I put the veggies in the bottom, the Malaysian style pork patties on top with some cashews sprinkled on. And these are gonna make delicious lunches for Adam and I during the week. Definitely check out Green Chef. I have talked about them forever, but they are definitely my favorite meal kit and specifically my favorite meal kit for meal prepping because these are just awesome healthy dinners that I would never think of on my own. The combination of flavors is great. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys my recipe for pumpkin bars or the recipe I use anyway. It's from uh, the Food Network, Paula Dean. I've actually been using this since probably 2009 or before. It's really good, you can meal prep it. Well, it's not really meal prep, I guess. You can prep it for dessert during the week. It's a good snack. Take it to a party, eat it for breakfast. <laughs> so in here I've got some sugar and I'm going to add four eggs. I'm gonna add one cup of vegetable oil and then one can of pumpkin. I like this recipe because it uses exactly a can of pumpkin, you don't have any waste. So I got this new can opener from Kitchen Mama and I'll show you guys how it works. So it's basically magnetic and it automatically goes around the can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, let's see if it works. Oh yeah. See, it just, it actually takes the whole top off with no sharp edges or anything. I think it's really cool. I don't know. It's just a, something I saw kind of advertised before and I was like, you know, I need a new can opener anyway. My old one was getting kind of sketchy, so I thought I would try it. Okay, so I'm gonna put my pumpkin in here and I'm just gonna use a hand mixer today. I'm gonna add the dry ingredients now. So two cups of flour two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just gonna mix this up until it's combined. So the original recipe calls to bake this in a nine by 13 pan. However, the times I've done that before, it's too thick and it almost doesn't get cooked all the way through. So I prefer to bake it in more of like a jelly roll pan. Um, I'm not sure of the exact measurements of this, but it's a little bit bigger than a nine by 13. So I'm just gonna spray it and add some parchment paper so I can get this out of here easily. And by using this size of pan, this will be more like bars and less like a cake, which, it's, it's fine either way. Like I said, I've just noticed when I bake it in a nine by 13 that it's a little bit too thick and it doesn't cook quite as evenly. What ends up happening is the edges obviously get done first and then the middle is still a bit uh, uncooked. All right, I'm gonna measure this just in case you guys wanna know. So this is a 15 by 10, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe 15 by 10 is the standard like jelly roll size pan. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven, 350. Um, I'm probably gonna put it in for 25 minutes and start checking it at that point. Here's how my pumpkin bars turned out. They are perfectly baked and I've been just keeping them off to the side on a cooling rack so they're ready to frost now. Uh, I really recommend baking them in that jelly roll pan instead of the cake pan. They just turn out so much more evenly. So in this bowl, I've got one package of cream cheese that I softened, one stick of butter that I softened, and two cups of powdered sugar. And we're gonna be a little bit bougie today. And instead of vanilla extract, we're gonna use 
half a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. Okay, and then I'm just gonna beat this up until it's smooth. Is there anything better than cream cheese icing? I just, I really don't think that there is much, but. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna pour this frosting or plop, pour, whatever you wanna say, out on this sheet of pumpkin bar goodness and give it a frost. Now, I do recommend storing this in the refrigerator, obviously, because you've got the butter and the cream cheese in the pumpkin bar, so you don't want that to spoil. Uh, but what I normally do is that if I'm going to serve these, I'll take them out of the fridge for, you know, I don't know, two, two hours, I would say, before you serve them. Um, that way the frosting can have time to soften because, I mean, you can eat it while the frosting is cold too. It's just, you know, it's kind of hard and not as creamy. This is really cool too because since I put the vanilla bean paste in there, you can see the little flecks of vanilla bean. I can't even remember the last time I made these. I don't, I normally make them at least once every year in the fall or the winter, but I don't, I don't think I made them last year, or at least if I did, I can't remember. Just try to get it as evenly as you can. And if you don't have an offset spatula, I highly recommend getting one for frosting purposes. Uh, you can frost with a butter knife, obviously, but when you get one of these, it's just so much better. You don't even realize what you're missing <laughs> until you have one. Uh, this one is a pampered chef one, but you can get similar ones online too. All right, we're gonna cut some here because I'm just quite sure my family is gonna wanna try <laughs> one tonight. Some, some toasty bacon there. I know, I saw burn out a little bit. <laughs> All right, so here are our pumpkin bars. You can see that the cake is uh, very moist with the cream cheese frosting. Highly recommend this recipe. If you haven't tried it or if you've never made pumpkin bars, I highly recommend them. They are delicious. All right, the next recipe that I'm going to prep is out of this America's Test Kitchen, the Complete Autumn and Winter Cookbook. So I have really used this cookbook a lot. I'll link it down below. I ended up finding this at Walmart, which I thought was kind of odd. Normally I don't find America's Test Kitchen cookbooks there, but you guys know I am an avid collector of cookbooks. However, I don't really feel bad about that because I really do use my cookbooks. Like I use them all the time, all the time. So. Anyway, we're gonna make this herbed spinach dip recipe, which is this one that's pictured right here. This sounds really good to have as a dip uh, with veggies, so I thought we would try it. So the first thing that I have here is a 10 ounce bag of chopped spinach. I got this at Aldi, it looks like this. Uh, if I remember correctly, I feel like I used to buy these in boxes, but maybe they just sell them in bags now, I'm not sure. I defrosted it in the microwave, and then I just squeezed the liquid out in a strainer over a bowl like this. So I'm gonna set this aside while we prep the other ingredients. So this dip is made in a food processor. If you are a home cook and you don't have a food processor, I would highly recommend getting one. Um, they are a bit of an investment, but I honestly think it's one of those things that is an essential tool in the kitchen, in my uh, humble opinion. I use mine all the time. So since this is going to all be processed in the food processor, we don't have to chop these veggies super fine, but you do want to chop them a little bit because, for example, like the fresh garlic, if you just put the cloves in there without mincing them, um, likely you will have large chunks of garlic in there and then you know you'll be eating and be like oh that's a big chunk of garlic <laughs> so the recipe calls for half of a red bell pepper but this is a very small one so I am just going to go ahead and use the whole thing and then we also need three scallions or green onions chopped up tablespoon of minced dill. Probably not gonna measure this. Just gonna eyeball it. Kind of excited about this recipe. I love making homemade 
dips and dressings. I always just think they taste so much better than the store-bought kind. However, no shade if you like your store-bought dips. I'm going to grab some parsley. This calls for half a cup of fresh parsley, so I'll do that. So I'm not gonna use the stems. Also, I shared this with you guys, I don't know, in one video. I'll link it down below. It is an herb keeper, and basically you uh, put your herbs in there, like a flower vase, and it works fantastic. I really like it. I like that it's a large capacity. I put basil in here before, it keeps it fresh a long time. All right, I'm just gonna add half a cup of sour cream. We had this left over in this container from when we did our baked potato bar the other night. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was re very recently, Vlogmas video. Half a cup of mayo. Okay, and then we need half a teaspoon of salt a quarter of a teaspoon of ground pepper, and a quarter of a teaspoon of hot sauce. You could use sriracha. I'm just gonna put a little bit of Frank's Red Hot in there. Okay, let me get the food processor out. Do you guys think it would help if I put the spinach in there? <laughs> Gosh, oh, what am I even doing? I'm like, why is that not turning green? Oh, I didn't add the green stuff. I'm gonna scrape down the sides a little bit. And this is also something you want to let sit in the fridge if you can. Any you know dressing or dip that you have uh, is best when you let it sit in the fridge for you know at least a couple of hours. 12 hours or a day is probably better. All right, so here's my dip. You can see that it's all uh, pureed and creamy. So. I don't remember where I got this contraption. I may have gotten it as a gift, but this is a dip bowl that you can actually put ice in the bottom of and then set the dip over that. And it comes with a lid too, which is nice for parties so your dip doesn't get warm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and store it in here. And then when I'm ready to serve it, I can just take it out, put it over some ice and we're good to go. I did try this with a cracker and it's delicious. I think it will even be better, obviously, once it sits and the flavors kind of have a chance to meld together. I also think this is very like Christmassy too. You know, if you wanted to put it on like a Christmas themed uh, veggie tray or something like that, but I'll definitely be making this again. I don't even really care for cooked spinach and I really like this, so win-win. Hello guys, today we're gonna <laughs> make some carrots. Butter. <laughs> Today we're gonna make some carrots and butter. All right, thank you, Connor, for that intro. So we are going to prep a recipe uh, from this autumn and winter cookbook. This is actually a recipe for chicken and dumplings, but we're gonna make turkey and dumplings because I still have turkey left over from Thanksgiving that I've frozen. I vacuum sealed portions of it like this, and I just took it out of the freezer uh, yesterday and let it thaw. So. The original recipe calls to like poach the chicken. Obviously we don't have to do that because our turkey is already cooked, so we're gonna start with the next step. Um, do you wanna put the butter in the pot? Yeah, just. Okay. Yep, just pop it in. And then I'm gonna chop up one onion and we're gonna need uh, the equivalent of four carrots. I already have baby carrots, so I don't have to chop and peel them. Can't put no, no, I'm, I gotta chop them up first. The carrots? Yeah. I'm, I'm good. This knife is super sharp. I'm good. You can help me when I when I need to chop up the turkey. You can help do that, okay? And it cuts like a knife. You know that song? I also stabbed myself once with a nah. knife. I just, I just <laughs> doop and I started bleeding. <laughs> na na na. Oh, the onions are really na, good. Na, 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 na. Oh, do your contacts help you not cry when you look at onions? Uh, I have glasses on right I now. I just touched my eyes. But go, you're gonna have to go wash your hands. Oh yeah, I just touched my eyes. Ooh. You get used to it after you cook a lot. <laughs> Become immune to the effects of the onion, I feel like. Anyway, what I was gonna say is that this particular recipe actually has a um, like instructions in it for making it ahead of time. 
So basically we're gonna make kind of like the stew or the soup part of the turkey and dumplings. And then um, that can be refrigerated and heated up later. And then we'll also just mix the dry ingredients together for the dumplings. And then that way when um, I'm ready to cook them, all I basically have to do is heat up the turkey mixture, uh, mix up the dumplings, and we're good to go. Okay, so we've got our carrots and onions in here. You wanna put this on the stove and we'll start cooking it. Okay. So this, some of this turkey is in pretty large chunks, so I think we're gonna cut this up into smaller pieces. What you wanna do is you wanna take the turkey and just cut it into like bite-sized pieces, because this is gonna go like turkey and turkey and dumplings. So okay. just imagine how, you know, what size it would be if you would like to eat it that way. It helps if you kind of saw it a little bit. There you go. That's good. Don't do don't do it. Too, I yeah. I just don't. I don't want you to cut your hand. Okay. okay. Okay, so my carrots and onions are uh, softened and the recipe calls for some fresh thyme. Instead of taking it off the stems and mincing it, I just like to saute it in with the onions. Um, you can take the stems out later. So I'm gonna add six tablespoons of flour and we just wanna, yep, you can stir it. We just wanna stir and cook it for, I don't know, maybe about a minute until all the flour and the butter is absorbed. Okay, now the recipe calls for some dry sherry. I don't have any of that and I honestly have a really hard time finding it. So I'm gonna use some white wine instead. And Connor, do you wanna pour this in? Yeah. So I have three quarters of a cup of just a Sauvignon Blanc. Just go ahead and dump it all in. Okay, and then you can go ahead you can go ahead and give that a stir until everything's mixed together. Okay, so now we're gonna add our broth. So I've got, yep, go ahead and pour that in. I've got about Hold two, it. yep, I've got about two cups of chicken broth um, that's just left over in my fridge that I wanna use up. And since I used my turkey carcass after Thanksgiving to make homemade turkey stock, I have some turkey stock as well. So we'll add that. It calls for five cups. I'm going to add about six cups, which will be fine. We can recycle that, so just leave it on the counter. Yep. Okay, and then you you can pour this one in. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of fat on the top of it, but it's fine. There you go. Yep, and then go ahead and give it a stir. All right, so we're going to add, you can add the pepper. We're going to add some ground pepper. And we're going to add two bay leaves. So like half of it? No, two two of the leaves. Oh. They're individual leaves, yeah. Just drop two of them in there. Mommy? Yep. Thanks for being my assistant. Yeah, simple too. Okay, yep. And then go ahead and pour that half and half in there. So the recipe calls for a third cup of heavy cream. I'm just gonna use half and half because that's what I have open in the fridge right now. And then you can go ahead and give that a stir. We are going to bring this to a simmer and simmer it for about 20 minutes. Are the leaves gonna melt? No, they just give it flavor. And then we take them out before we eat it. So to make the dumplings ahead, we're just gonna go ahead and mix the dry ingredients together. So I need two cups of regular flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna give this a quick whisk and then I'll set this aside, just cover it with plastic wrap. When it's time to assemble the dish, we'll just add, it looks like one and a third cups of heavy cream. And then, you know, you basically just drop the dumplings into the soup part as it's bubbling. Looks delicious. This also has peas, when do we add those? Okay, so I guess it calls for one and a half cups of peas. We can actually add those when we add the turkey. Okay, so here is our turkey uh, dumpling broth mixture. It has simmered for about 20 minutes, and you can see that it's still a little bit soupy, 
but when we cook this the final time and add the dumplings that will help thicken it up even more it smells incredible it smells like thanksgiving all over again i'm gonna add that turkey that connor helped me chop up and about a cup and a half of green peas so we're just gonna give this a stir and i will be cooking this for the final time in a weekend prep video so that will be coming up soon you guys can uh, watch that so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to let this cool until it's like i don't know just not until it's so hot and then i can actually put the lid on this and stick it right in my fridge out in the garage when i'm ready to cook it all i have to do is take it out put it back on the stove heat it up mix up the dumplings and we're good to go so here i've got my dumpling mixture i also forgot to mention that i fished out the herbs and stuff that were in there uh, but think of meal prep, you know, in innovative ways like this. You don't always have to cook the whole meal ahead of time. Even just getting a head start like this is super helpful, especially for those busy weeknights. Thank you guys so much for watching today's meal prep video. Let me know which recipe you are going to try. Also, don't forget to check out Green Chef. I'll have a link in the description box below to get 10 free meals plus free shipping on your first box. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Bye.